I mean, I'd done a lot of dirty work in my life since I was 12. Yeah. When you work on farms, you get used to a lot of things. You left Germany, and then you were working on cadavers, human cadavers or it was something? was my first job in America, yeah. Cool. At the American University of Texas in Galveston. I came to America, I won the German Youth Championship in discus, javelin, and shot put in track and field with my team. Mm -hmm. okay? A year later, or whilst uh, in that year, southern Germany, 1617, my cousin Maren Thompson from Blankenese in Hamburg, she three brilliant daughters, the Thompson girls, Wiebke became a psychiatrist and came to America as well. Maren, the second one who sponsored my trip to America, was a radiologist oncologist. And the youngest one stayed in Paris. She translated the Jean-Paul Sartre and Camus. So three brilliant women. I loved them. And older than I was cousins, uh, because their mother was 20 years older than my mother. Anyway, so she asked if I wanted to come to America. I said, oh, hmm, interesting. Adventure, why not? So I agreed, and I stood in line at the consulate in Hamburg and got my immigration papers and all that, and had a sponsor. And came to New York at the age of 18, and I remember looking at New York and saying, wow, man, wow. You know, for a boy from a village of two or three hundred, mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, for anyone, really, who's said, New York, not, yeah. my God, oh. Mighty, wow. Whew. And anyway, then. So, how did you arrive in New York? By boat, but on the Hanseatic. So, you saw it coming to it, like you saw the. Early in the morning. You see the Statue of Liberty, you see the skyline. And, was, and this was in end of May. It's already getting humid and warm. Mm. And so, whoa. It was all so. I mean, the, the impressions were. The smells in the air, the, the the noise, the cacophony, all that is so damn interesting, you know. Wow. And then um, I went to the Empire State Building. We landed at the 34th Street docks. And then I remember a day later, or whatever, I forget the chronology, went up the Empire State Building and they had a, uh, a, st a hamburger stand. I had my first hamburger and a chocolate milkshake. I said, ooh. <laughs> and I had hamburgers and chocolate milkshake for years afterwards. It was my main meal. <laughs> yeah. Until I learned the clock's arteries. <laughs> right. Anyway, but it was delicious. Uh huh. So then uh, I'd saved enough money to buy a Greyhound bus ticket. I'd worked on farms to earn my money for the passage to America. And that took a Greyhound bus from New York to Galveston, Texas. Wow. Why Texas? Three nights, because they were teaching at the Military University of Texas in Galveston. Okay. The John Seeley Hospital, I think it was called. And that's where they were teaching. My eldest one, the psychiatrist, and Martin, the second one, the radiologist, uh, oncologist. Okay, they were both there teaching. Yes. Got it. So why I don't, did never find that out. I don't remember asking them that. So Maren had a family of four, and um, in typically German fashion, you work. Mm. So I got there and uh, said, we have a job for you the next morning. Oh, a colleague of ours is a pathologist, and he is doing research on arthritis. The hell did I know about arthritis? So I said, okay, you know. I mean, I'd done a lot of dirty work in my life since I was 12. Yeah. When you work on farms, you get used to a lot of things. So they introduced me. They took me to the Kadama Hall. And I don't know, hundreds. Kadavas under brown blankets. On like gurneys or whatever tables or something? No air conditioning. 
1959, huge fans oh. and formaldehyde. Brutal. I thought, well, shit, let's go. So my task was to cut this here and this here to get so the doctor could look under the, the kneecap knee. for signs of arthritis, deformance, they called it. Then they asked me to translate some German stuff from medical stuff. And I was good in English, but I wasn't that good. So, uh, long story short, they moved after about a month to Dallas, Texas. And I moved with them. Oh. And uh, in Dallas, I was always fascinated by the Marine Corps because they were tough guys. You know, I thought, hmm, I'd, he I'd heard if I joined the Marine Corps early or whatever, I would become a citizen early. I oh, said, yeah. Nice. And it was physical, it was real, you know? So, well, I went to the recruiting station in Dallas, Texas. One of the recruiters is alive. And it was Sergeant Baba, yes, okay, fill out. And I was asked to take a test. Well, shit, I'd never taken a test in English before, ever. But you totally spoke English at that point? No. I had learned British English in school. Okay. I could quote That's Shakespeare. That's why you have this wonderful accent. I could quote Shakespeare. Oh. But I knew nothing about math, okay. nothing about the American vernacular, and nothing about multiple choice tests. I said, multiple choice? What's that? Answer, one, two, three, four, uh, one. Then trying to understand the questions, I thought, hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Way over my head. Then there were questions in math. Well, I, had, I knew nothing about inches and yards and feet and miles. In Germany, it's the decimal system, much mm -hmm. simpler. Of course. You multiply by 10, whatever. And I looked at it and I said, I'm sorry, I just, you just come back in half a year. He knew I wasn't a dummy, just come back in half a year. I said, okay, anyway. That was my experience in Texas. And then... Wait, so wait, are we still in that half year period though? What's going on during that half year? You're that's learning... That's in the half year. That's okay. the first... Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, like I want to no, know... No, 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 no. Okay. No, no. There's only two or three months in Texas. Then I asked my cousin Marin, who else do you know in America? And she knew of a German rancher in Missoula, Montana. Okay. It's okay. Called August Hamburg. August Hamburg, who had come to America in 1900 and owned a ranch outside of Missoula, Montana, in Florence, Montana. So I wrote to him, quick, quick, do you need someone to work? As yes, come on up, up. So I'd earned enough money in the hospital to buy a um, Greyhound bus ticket, my second Greyhound bus trip. First from New York to Galveston, mm -hmm. now from Dallas to Missoula, Montana. And I drove through breathtaking countryside. Whoa, man. Northern Texas and then Oklahoma, parts of Colorado, and then Wyoming, and wow. I mean, yeah. stunning, stunning. But, but, I said, why are they ruining this extraordinary countryside? with one commercial sign after the other. Coca-Cola, Lucky Strike, Marlboro, whatever, all over the, I said, wait a minute, man. This is pristine countryside. How can you ruin it like that? That's why I will never forget Lady Bird Johnson, Lyndon Johnson's wife, mm -hmm. who started the Beautification of America Act years later. I said, thank God, because otherwise you were ruining America's countryside. Oh, did that take down the billboards? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Right, because there are really no billboards. Called the Beautification right, of America. Right, right. Huge billboards. You have no idea. Cluttered. Cluttering right, right, right. the most gorgeous countryside I've ever seen in my life. I'm going to interrupt you for a second just to tell you that I drove across the country this past, a few months ago, so yeah. over the summer. It was incredible. I didn't even want to do it, and I cannot tell you how beautiful. It was oh. just, uh, I loved every minute of it, going from state to state and seeing the landscape changing. 
and it was just such an experience. America's I recommend breathtaking. It. Breathtaking. 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 I did not expect it to be as yeah awe inspiring. Even the Dakotas, you know, it's just oh wow, man, breathtaking. Mm -hmm. Really breathtaking, you know. So you made it to the farm, and they had a spot for you uh, to a live. Ranch, a, a ranch, a ranch, a ranch. They picked me up at the Missoula Crayon bus station at six in the evening. The rancher came personally with a new Chevy. I love cars. Always loved cars. Learned how to drive when I was ten years old. Knew how to drive tractors, all that stuff. I loved cars. My first. A real basic desire was to become a race car driver. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I love I love the sound of the engine. My wife thinks it's horrible noise. I said no. Okay, that's the meal. That's the meal. Back at two. Ooh. Back at two. I love a big V8, a rumbling V8. A boom, boom, boom. Oh, I love that stuff. What do you drive now? Um, 